Over 300 mobile phones, 40 plus journalists, three opposition leaders, two union ministers and other senior government officials and scientists. All allegedly uh, being snooped upon using Israeli software Pegasus. The NSO, the company that owns the software and the Indian government have both categorically denied allegations of snooping. But the political showdown over the scandal is exploding. If proven, this could be the biggest hacking scandal to hit India. As many as 300 Indians may have been targets of high-tech snooping between 2017 and 2019. The potential targets include two serving ministers, Ashwini Vaishnav and Prahlad Patel, Rahul Gandhi, Prashant Kishore and Mamta Banerjee's nephew Abhishek Banerjee also figure in the list. Other high-profile names include former election commissioner Ashok Lavasa and the staffer who accused former CGI Ranjan Gogoi of harassment. The leaked database of phone numbers of potential targets was accessed by Paris-based non-profit media Forbidden Stories. The list shared with 16 global news organizations was released in India by the news portal The Wire. The suspected snooping was allegedly done using phone hacking spy software Pegasus, manufactured by Israeli firm NSO, which claims to service only governments. The report by The Wire says whether hacking actually took place or not can be confirmed only by conducting a technical analysis of the phones. The NSO group has rejected all the targets. The Snoopgate scandal rocked Parliament on Monday, the first day of the monsoon session. I highlight, sir. The Narendra Modi government issued a statement in Parliament denying the charges. This cannot be a coincidence, Honorable Speaker, sir. In the past, similar claims were made regarding the use of Pegasus on WhatsApp. Those reports had no factual basis and were categorically denied by all parties. It is beyond dispute that the data has nothing to do with surveillance or with NSO. My view is that the, the opposition is, however, unrelenting in its attack, prompting a furious counter by the center. A thorough independent judicial inquiry or indeed an inquiry by a strong parliamentary committee could well be the way forward. But my view is that an inquiry must be done. We cannot just brush it under the carpet. Not a shred of evidence has come that in this entire Pegasus story there is any linkage of the government or the Bharti Janta Party. The exploding political showdown over Pegasus software has once again reignited the debate on privacy. The big question now is, did any hacking take place? If it did, who ordered it? The exploding political showdown over Pegasus software has once again reunited the debate over privacy. The question is, was the hacking ordered and if so, who ordered it? Meanwhile, with the new names cropping up, the entire situation is expected to be making it to the parliament with fireworks expected. With camera person Satya Ranjan, this is Kamaljeet Sandhu in Delhi for India Today. I have many questions swirling in my head as I'm sure do you. Let's go one by one. The first question I'll ask on the news track, how credible is the evidence to back the charge that the Indian government illegally tapped the phones of politicians, government officials and journalists? Joining me on this broadcast, I want to welcome first, representing the ruling BJP, its spokesperson, IT cell chief, Amit Malviya, representing the opposition Congress, Shama Mohammed. With us on this broadcast is Sandeep Unithan. Sandeep is an executive editor at India Today magazine. He's part of the list of 40 plus journalists whose phones was allegedly tapped into or at least an attempt was made because he received an email uh, asking about whether his phone had been tapped into. We'll ask Sandeep about what happened. Uh, we have on this broadcast Swati Chaturvedi, uh, journalist, author, again, one of those who claims at this moment that their phone was tapped into. We'll find out whether there's evidence to back that charge. Uh, we also have Kanish Gaur, founder of the India Future Foundation. I want to go across 
to Sandeep Punithan first. Sandeep, explain to our viewers how certain are you or how credible is the evidence to believe that your phone was indeed tapped into or infected using the Pegasus software? What investigation have you done on your own and how did you find out that your phone was allegedly being tapped into? Well, Rahul, um, I received a questionnaire from uh, The Wire uh, about two days back and that's how I got to know that uh, there is, uh, you know, suspicion that my phone was possibly on a list of phone numbers that were uh, placed under surveillance and uh, frankly i have no way of verifying that other than you know give my phone for uh, analysis which i plan to do now uh, you know in the light of these revelations and you know this is something that uh, can be done only if your phone is literally you know uh, analyzed by the experts to see whether there's been traces of uh, this malware that's been infected and that seems to be the case in uh, several other cases as well um, where uh, the use of Pegasus was established once the phone was investigated. And I think this should be the way ahead that, uh, you know, if there's any suspicion of anyone's phone being, uh, you know, uh, infected or targeted, I think the phones should be, uh, you know, put up for, uh, you know... Uh, uh, Swati, do you have forensic evidence to substantiate the charge that your phone was tapped into by the central government illegally? Well, Rahul, first of all, I'd like to say I have not made this claim. Sure. Like you started saying that, you know, I had made the claim that my phone was tapped. That is totally incorrect. I was told by about, you know, this investigative group that they believed that my phone had been hacked into using Pegasus software. And they thought that it was, you know, it was infected. And then we got a forensic, they had the whole forensic thing uh, examination on, which they did. And uh, the evidence is that it is, that a previous instrument I had could have been infected. So I am not making these claims. These claims are being made by an investigative group, a journalist group, and 16 publications around the world, which are very well known, like Le Monde, like The Guardian, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Times are saying this. So it's not me saying it. It's not me accusing the government. It is what I have been told. I'm the victim here of a, a you know, attack, a kind of, a, uh, you know, um, tapping attempt by my own government. Okay, so you're saying that this is something that this international consortium reached out to you with. This is not a charge that you individually have leveled. Absolutely. And from what you found out so far, the forensic analysis suggests that this phone was indeed tapped into. Is that what you've been told, Swati? Exactly what I've been told. And they're doing further analysis. And they're saying that an earlier phone I had, which, was, uh, which I've stopped using, was uh, probably most definitely infected using the spy-grade military software of Pegasus, which is only sold to governments around the world. Okay, so let that be the base for me to go across to Amit Malvia, because what we have at this moment, Mr. Malvia, is a group of individuals who've been approached, saying that your phones may have been infected. Some of those phones have been forensically examined, and it's been found that Pegasus software was on their phone, or at least an attempt was made to... In, uh, to put this malware on their systems. Now, this Israeli company says they only sell to government agencies and to governments and therefore this couldn't have been done by a private company or individual. It could only be done by a government and the Indian government happens to be a client according to uh, this Israeli company. Let me ask you the first direct question. Does the Indian government, Mr. Malvia, use Pegasus software? Well, I think that's a question for the government of India and its investigating agencies to answer. But Rahul, let me just take a step back here. I heard the two people on your program say that they were approached by a media house saying that their phone may have been hacked. Now the question is that, is there any evidence to it? And is there any evidence that links the government of India and its authorization of a hack? That is the question that is being asked and there are no answers coming. In fact, the report that has been put out by the media portal here in India also remains silent on that aspect. It seems there is a list of numbers that have found their way to this consortium, uh, which wants to position itself as the guardian of all morality on this planet. And they're the ones who are saying that countries across the world, including democracies, have been irresponsible and have authorized these hacks. Now, the question is that, is there any evidence? Where has this data come from? Is it all-inclusive data? 
Are there more numbers to come out? If NSO claims that they have no numbers because the numbers are with their clients, and by the way, they also add some private players as their clients. If you read their uh, interview today to one of the uh, publication or news agency here in India, they've said that certain private players also have it. So the question is that while the opposition and the assorted um, uh, group of people who may be feeling slighted at their phones being hacked, I can understand, but where is the evidence? And this is Swati not the first time respond that to this point. Has been made. So what we've been able to establish so far is that maybe forensically it's been proven that attempts were made in to hack into uh, the phones of several individuals, including yourself. But what Amit Malvi argues is, where is the evidence to substantiate that this was being done by the Indian government? Pegasus sells to come governments worldwide. This could be an international player that could have been doing this. How do you convincingly link this with evidence? Because it's a very serious charge to the Modi government. Swati. It is absolutely a very serious charge. And I think Mr. Malvi is a very good defender of the government. But this is a bit of an adult defense today because the government has already conceded in parliament in the shape of the new IT minister saying that yes, Pegasus has been used. The government claims it has been used, but they claim it's an authorized uh, uh, use. So now with whether the surveillance is authorized or unauthorized is the bigger question. But you know what Mr. Malvi is saying that you know Pegasus has private players and all that is a bit of a you know, adult defense right now because the government itself has conceded in parliament today that yes, Pegasus has been used. In fact, oh, after so that, they're conceding that Pegasus hey, was used, oh, Swati, but they're not saying that it was used against you or Rahul Gandhi or Prashant Kishore. They're saying we have but, an elaborate but, mechanism. But, but, it goes up to the Home Secretary. He approves and authorizes Rahul, and yeah, whatever sir? surveillance yeah, yeah, happened, know, happened on that basis. Yes, Swati. Yeah, I know the defense is Rahul. I know that legally authorized taps are done with the consent of the Home Secretary. They're done for a limited period. This has been done for two whole years. You know, so let me finish. Ravi Shankar Prasad, who used to be the IT minister, has also gone today and done a press conference where he said 40 countries, including India, use this. So let us not debate whether it was used or not. Now we come to the bigger question. Look at the list of the people who have been targeted. There are some very few journalists left in this country who still do journalism. Those journalists are on the list. Politicians like Rahul Gandhi are on the list. Prashant Kishore. Uh, forensics revealed that his phone was hacked merely days before when he met uh, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi. Doesn't the list even make you suspicious, Rahul, that Mamta Banerjee's nephew, you know, uh, ministers of the government, uh, journalists, and leaders of the opposition are all being ta tapped? And you, this is some mysterious entity who we don't know who's, who's doing it. I mean, are we being very credulous here? We, you know, who who else will have the kind of money and the kind of you know. Um, the vision to buy this kind of a software, which is military-grade spyware, which the company, by the way, still claims that they only sell to governments. So, you know, why are we being so credulous? Let's ask the obvious questions. Look at the list of people snooped on. Amit Look Malvia, at who could have bought forget it. who does journalist, journalism and who doesn't. We leave that pot shot on the side. But these are people who are habitually opposed to this government and at various times come out with stories which the government would have found uncomfortable. Take, for example, uh, the woman who leveled an accusation against uh, a former Supreme Court Chief Justice and soon after Absolutely. that charge went public, her phone was put on tap and similarly Prashant Kishore on the day that he met the Gandhi family, his phone is being tapped into as is uh, Mamta Banerjee's uh, nephew Abhishek Banerjee. The cast of characters suggests that those who are not favorably disposed towards the government are the ones who are put under tap. You know, uh, Rahul, first of all, the hacks that this report refers to are dating 2017-18-19. I think Kishore meeting the Gandhi is a recent phenomenon. So some people in their excitement to play victim have perhaps missed the time. No, I think here. he makes the point but that his analysis was done after this meeting and the day happened. that the analysis was done, that day too it was yes. found that the data log was going back exactly. to Pegasus. Yeah. True. Rahul, I'm saying I'm making a different point. I'm not talking about when the analysis was done. This hack refers to period between 2017 and 19. You could do analysis two days back. Or for that matter, some people haven't even analyzed their phone yet, yet their numbers have found their way. So let's not 
uh, in our excitement to link and make a narrative, miss these finer details, number one. Number two is, uh, uh, I heard about journalism and how only some people do, do journalism and others don't. Well, I'm sure since your phone hasn't been hacked, uh, presumably you are not good enough journalist, but you know, you should do something about it. And so should some of the other journalists in India today whose phones have not been hacked. But uh, that aside, let me come to the more substantive issue here, which nobody seems to be wanting to answer. Every government, every state has facilities for surveillance because it is required for national security and it is very, very important. We are living in challenging times. But there is a process for it. For example, in India, Section 5.2 of the Indian Telegraph Act 1885, Section 69 of the IT Act 2000, determine what is the process. There is a process, Home Secretary, an officer of his equivalence is involved in it. Clearly, to believe that the government of India, which is what the allegation seems to be, is authorizing unauthorized hack using such a sophisticated um, software is like putting too much of importance to yourself. And I think some of these journalists need to take it a little easy. Lastly, there is a syndicate of amnesty foreign architecture, citizen lab, forbidden stories, and several other media agencies who are apparently in it together. They all are funded by George Soros Open Society, and we all know what is their purpose. It is to weaken democracies, weaken strong governments, um, make sure that elected governments cannot do what they are uh, expected to do, and therefore you see a report like this come just before the monsoon session starts. The question is that if you have such powerful agencies behind this, how come they have not been able to pull out evidence and put to the world that governments and democracies have ordered this? I'm sure Citizen Lab supposedly would have the wherewithal and the resources to do so. Okay, or so hold, hold that thought. I want to go across that. to Jitin Jain. He's one of our country's leading uh, cybersecurity experts. How credible is the evidence at this moment, Jitin, that the phones of Swati, Sandeep Punithan, and the others were hacked into not just hacked into using penises, but hacked into illegally and in an unauthorized fashion by the central government. Is there evidence to back that? Uh, uh, yes, I have gone through the entire report of MST, all the two forensic reports, this one and previous one. I've gone through citizen lab report. One thing is very clear. There are several people who were hacked uh, using Pegasus malware. There is no denying about it. There were certain people who were attempted to be hacked. There is no denial about it. The process of forensic analysis is absolutely at par, perfect with the best standards in the world. There are three doubts, however. Number one, there are so many people whose samples were taken, but their phones were not found to be infected. So the list, which has all the names and numbers of different people, uh, there is a possibility that not all of them would have been hacked. And the list may have been used for several other purposes. And uh, the Washington Post, Citizen Lab, Amnesty International, all call it a leaked database. Nobody talks about the source of authenticity or you know the level of integrity this might list might have. So tomorrow, if a journalist house was to add ten more numbers, we can't verify. It. But yes, forensic analysis of Pegasus is correct. There is no doubt about it. Now, second thing, the whole assumption of government of India being involved in this entire hack comes from two facts. One, there is an operator called Operator Ganges, which operates in India. And since NSO group repeatedly says that we sell only to the governments across the world, we are assuming that it is Indian government. But government can be any government, foreign government, Chinese government, Pakistani government, state government of Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Bombay. It could be any law enforcement agency of a state. Uh, Chhattisgarh police, I think I am told, took some demo. So it could be anyone. But here there is a bigger question. In my opinion, I think there is a private player which is also involved. And this comes from two fundamental reasons I have found in the report. One. You see, NSO group, if you were to take them on face value, they sell it on the government. They also say that their technology is never used for journalist uh, snooping or human rights abuse, which is an absolute lie. People have been killed using NSO. Jamal Khashoggi was killed. People have been snooped upon. Uh, you know, on your channel, Vijita Singh, Rohini Singh, all these people, Swati, they've been hacked. They are journalists. So NSO, if they say that they are sold only to government, we cannot take them at face value. Even They might have sold even to the private players. So do not take just because NSO is saying that no private player can be involved, there is no private player. I think we must investigate, we must figure out who can then be. Now, third point, no, every country, every democracy, every dictatorship, every constitutional scheme of governance will always have an intelligence agency in that country, which will acquire data for statecraft, you know, intelligence collection, security of the state, survival of the state. There is no doubt about it. And every possible 
uh, you know, tool for surveillance and technology decryption would be acquired. So whether government of India bought uh, Pegasus or not is immaterial. And I can tell you, no agency worth their salt is worth their salt if they don't buy what is available best in the market. So let's assume government of India bought it. Now, if government of India bought it, it is it is its usage would have been carried through the established procedure to authorize means. Maybe Home Secretary, you know, now, how do you know that? Enforcement agencies. While you assume that to be true, because, no, that's if the only, charge that only, needs to be investigated. Was that, that is it, where I'm segregating. Was no, no, Rahul, Rahul, being carried out using authorized means? That's the uh, question no. that needs to be Rahul, Rahul, this yes, yes, this is the answer. So, entire agency will not turn rogue. Home Secretary, Cabinet Secretary, Prime Minister, everybody will not turn rogue. So, government agency abusing surveillance possibilities less. So, that is why there is definitely one more than one player. Maybe a state. Maybe a private operator, which is also operating. Okay, so you make an important point, and I want to put that question to Kanish Gaur at the India Future Foundation. NSO sells to governments. It doesn't mean they sell only to the central government. They could just as well have sold to the Rajasthan government, the Odisha government, the Chhattisgarh government, or the West Bengal government. Secondly, just because some of those phones have been proven to have been hacked into or infected, doesn't mean that all phones were. Now you can add to this list any name you want, and without having the evidence to back it. Therefore, you can make it seem as if the hacking was much bigger than it actually was. Kanish Gaur, respond to everything you heard from Jitin Jain. See, uh, the bigger point we need to understand is that these agencies, a lot of times, use third parties to do this hacking for the surveillance. Jitin Jain, Jitin Jain himself is a cybersecurity expert who works with many of these law enforcement agencies. So you don't know who is actually working for the government and doing this job for, the, for them. So there has to be a law that if somebody is snooping in, he cannot use third parties and only authorized government law enforcement agencies are able to use such mechanisms. Today, a lot of this information is being sold to third parties. Look at uh, Pegasus, the NSO group, not only sells it to government, it also has its own people selling it on the dark web. How the, you know NSO's Pegasus came to light? Because a sale was being made for $50 million on dark web, where one of their own employees was selling it outside to a third party, right? So you just cannot trust NSO saying they will only sell it to the government. They are a commercial company, they will send it to whosoever they want. And there is no way you can find out whether the government was doing it themselves or they used a third party. So just by saying that NSO sells to the government and government of India follows the guidelines, you know, very well, that's not an excuse. You need to have a very strong mechanism. Okay, so right? Shama Mohammed, the points that are emerging in this conversation are this. Even if the phones of, uh, of Swati, Sandeep Punitan and others were hacked into, at this moment what is not established is who ordered the hack and why, whether it was illegal or not, and secondly, whether this was done by the union government or some private third party. Rahul, give me some time. I waited for around 20 minutes. Now, very important what I've, I've been listening to everybody. The most important thing today, Amit Malvi is somebody who has always answers. He's defended the government like nothing. When you asked him the question, was do you have you acquired Pegasus? He says, I do not know. You need to ask the government. Now, he represents the government. And of course, from his answer, as well as what the IT minister said in parliament, we know that they have acquired Pegasus. The next question they say is, it is involved. We need evidence. Let's look at Watergate. Investigative journalist cracked it. You ba go back to right now, Rafael. Again, media part. You know, many important cases. You are a journalist yourself, Rahul. You know that investigative journalists crack it. But what happens after that? They order a probe, a government orders. They think there is no evidence. How can you blame? Let's say that this has not started in India. Washington Post, Guardian, Amnesty International, they are not some low-life organizations or media organizations. They have credibility. All right. Now, every time any allegation against this government has come after 2014. What happens is they say, this is a lie. There's nothing to do with us. There is no accountability. There is no investigation. Augusta Westland, I'm just taking a case where immediately the, uh, we stopped the order, a CBI investigation. We were ready for JPC, everything. That is how a transparent government works. Mm -hmm. Now, we have names of Rahul Gandhi. Uh, um, in 2019. Now, if that involvement is there, if they were spying on Rahul Gandhi, then the election is fraudulent. We have names of Supreme Court judges. We have names of our intelligence head. Now, just imagine 
foreign organizations knowing about what is happening at our borders that is treason rahul okay. that is treason now, now that's the saying, point amit malviya can i just say that we need we one last point rahul please one last point i i i it's a request from my side in 2017 we had a seven bed judgment justice kehar saying that it uh, right to privacy is a fundamental right when they wanted us to link aadhar to our mobiles and bank accounts and solicitor general had said in court the right to privacy is not a fundamental right but we got a judgment now if they have gone against this this is going against the constitution of india there is crime here there is crime happening and i want amit malviya to answer that why don't you go in for a probe amit malviya why are you people okay. always okay so amit malviya is the central government willing for the supreme court to order an independent investigation into these charges sir so, super rao i want to clarify one thing um i am not the spokesperson for the government even though the congress spokesperson might want to believe that i speak for the party and secondly which spyware the government of india uses is not a matter of television debate it's a matter of national security and i think the congress spokesperson should realize this secondly as far as the probe is concerned i am all for probe we are all for transparency but what do we probe that there is a random list of phone numbers that is out there and a discredited media house or a consortium of it has said that their phones have been hacked eventually there was there were like about 12 phones which confirmed that there was some activity of this malware on their phone when they started with a list of 50000 numbers now do you think this is worth our national time do Mr. you think malware, anybody in his right mind is this charge that rahul gandhi and his Mr. social malware? circle including his uh, female acquaintances were being tapped into is true then that's a charge that needs to be probed is it okay for the government to say that no it's not true and that's where the matter ends or can there be a third party independent investigation which may find that what you're saying is true and what shama is saying is false why don't no. you go in for an Rahul. investigation you can't say you can't no. discredit let us Rahul. let him speak please let him speak please rahul we can't have this slanging match and you should tell the congress spokesperson that she has to be dignified in a debate look you can ask for an investigation but investigate what the report that has come out yesterday does not even allege that the government of india has ordered this unauthorized hack this is an assertion being made by a consortium of media houses and several agencies which seem to indicate that it could be the case is a sweeping allegation of those who may be wanting to hobble india's monsoon session and its development good enough to spend national time on it and i want to ask you again if rahul gandhi's number or for that matter ministers in the government are being snooped on there has to be some evidence and if this happened in 2017 18 and 19 how come somebody like rahul gandhi did not know of it i mean you know rahul gandhi the congress would like us to believe is a smart guy how did he not figure out that his phone was hacked and why okay. did he not make swati wants to come in amit malviya is saying anybody can stand up and say that anybody else's phone was tapped unless there is evidence uh, you know why should the monsoon session just be allowed to go to dust why should it not so be productive we, rahul as journalists are we responsibly saying that 16 media houses have conspired in a vast global conspiracy against the bharatiya janata party government to derail the monsoon session of parliament are you serious is washington post le monde you know uh, forbidden stories all together in this vast global conspiracy to derail just a monsoon session you know we are making all sorts of excuses there are people like ashok lavasa who was our election commissioner whose phone is also believed to be tapped so you know why can't we have a proper investigation set up a jpc allow supreme court to investigate it what is this uh, you know permanent cry of anti national and this is what is that, what is the, uh, about national security in journalism i mean do our journalists terrorists that they, they, they should be monitored on national security what is the national security in monitoring ashok lavasa or monitoring uh, unauthorizedly scrutinizing the phones of rahul gandhi or prashant kishor please tell me the national security aspect to this no because why a probe yeah. may also not be yeah, well, uh, no, just just one second mr malviya why a probe may also be can required is because if this charge is left uninvestigated 
you know, everyone will wonder whether their phone is being tapped into. If there is a thorough investigation, and even if it emerges that the government is correct and these charges were baseless, at least people will be reassured that their phones are not being tapped into. Otherwise, at this moment, people will get spooked. Is Big Brother watching? Rahul. Or Watergate. Rahul, one sentence I'd like to say. The onus of providing evidence that the phone has been hacked at the behest of government of India lies on those who are making this allegation. They may be whoever, whatever their reputation is, globally, they have to provide that evidence. There is no evidence so far. Please get the evidence and there will be an investigation as the opposition is demanding. But there has been no evidence earlier when this Pegasus thing was brought up. There is no evidence even today. Now, Jitin Jain, that's an important point evidence. that Amit Malviya makes. Unlike the Neera Radia tapes, where there were actual conversations between Neera Radia and power brokers in this instance, there is no evidence. All you've got is a number, an allegation that that number was tapped into, a, in some cases, forensic evidence to back that charge. But you don't have any call logs, you don't have any recordings, so you don't know whether the charge is true or not, is the point that Amit Malve is making. No, I disagree with Amit. I think he's, uh, you know, uh, uh, abdicating his duty as a part, uh, national spokesman of a party. I think, you you see, uh, everybody's an interest group over here. A minister names Amazon of, you know, violating FDI probe and, you know, running a fake company here. Then you have a Washington Post owned by Jeff Bezos coming in. WhatsApp CEO today is saying, because NSO groups, all this expose has come in, that is why no country should regulate us and end to an encryption ka jo pe India mein ho hai, that should not happen. I think despite of what happens, one thing should happen in this country. Every big tech has to be regulated. And two questions has to be asked for WhatsApp. If they had the list of all these numbers for one and a half years, why don't you tell people who have been had and who has done it? Why this selective extra 25 people today, 50 people, three months later, 100 people, one, one you know, even for wire. Why didn't they disclose the entire list last night? Half today, half tomorrow, half maybe next week. Everybody is looking for eyeballs, publicity, that. ratings. Third, last point. We must investigate whether if there are big techs attempt to push back against the laws in India. Second, I want to make a disclosure over here about the culture in this country. Nidhi Razan, one of the most senior journalists in India, was had six, seven months back. Along with her, four or five more journalists and political leaders were also had. I assisted her in the investigation. We did a detailed forensic analysis of the device. We found absolutely credible evidence of a state actor being involved. But in that case, <coughs> that actor was based in a foreign country. And despite of that, today we have agencies sitting over there. We don't investigate. I mean, five journalists were hacked just because we don't investigate these things. We at times do not even know whether it is a foreign intelligence agency, whether it is a private actor, whether this is a political party which is operating here and running all this racket. We must investigate, we must bring people to book, and we must not say that Sandeep Puritan, do you buy this argument that these could be foreign investigating agencies? Yes, it may be bought by... It could by be a private Rahul. player in India. It could be a private yeah. player in India. Rahul. We need to figure it out. Rahul, Sandeep, Sandeep. Rahul, there's a, there's, a, there's a larger implication to all of this, and that is the fact that you are allowed, you are basically using a foreign surveillance tool on your citizens. The question that needs to be asked is, are you giving a foreign government a compromat, that is compromising material on your own citizens, which they could possibly use at some later date? I mean, uh, you know, just like NSO says that uh, in one of its statements that it does not have access to the information that it gathers, but who's to believe them? Uh, how do we know that, for instance, all the intelligence that is harvested from these uh, uh, malware, uh, uh, you know, infections of the cell phones is not in some big giant data down there? And, uh, you know, you have the private data of your citizens sitting in a foreign country waiting to be used at some uh, future date. And you're talking of not just journalists, but you're talking of ministers, you're talking of government officials, government servants, politicians. And this is explosive. I think this is the larger uh, issue here, the fact that you are using a foreign surveillance tool um, on your citizens, which could, you know, be compromised. In the short run, it could give you a lot of intel and, you know, uh, 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 thing for your law enforcement agencies. But in the long run, it compromises national security, Rahul. You know, the one Rahul, question that crossed in? my mind often as this story broke is whether my phone is safe. You know, how would you know if your phone is infected with spyware? When it comes to Israeli spyware Pegasus, it's almost impossible to detect. It's called the super snooper and what makes it lethal is that it hardly leaves a trace.
It's a word you've probably become familiar with in light of the new Snoopgate scandal. Pegasus, the Israeli developed cyber espionage tool, is one of the best at extracting information from smartphones. The spyware is sent via text message or missed call to a target phone. It is especially dangerous because it does not need a link to be clicked on or the call to be answered to break into the targeted smartphone. Pegasus can target BlackBerry, Android and iPhones. Israel ki company NSO Group, which has made Pegasus software, hai. this software has Apple's iOS devices, iPhones and Google's Android devices to hack the most fast and powerful software. This software फोन के अंदर इंस्टॉल्ड एप्स और उनके प्लेटफॉर्म के अंदर मौजूद वल्नरेबिलिटीज का इस्तेमाल करके साइलेंटली फोन हैक करके उन लोगों की जासूसी करने में सामने आया है Once your phone is infected almost everything on your phone is vulnerable and accessible File retrieval instant messaging photographs and screenshots microphone recordings email SMS location tracking, network information, device settings, browsing history, contact details, social networks, calendar records and phone calls. Everything can be snooped upon. Since its discovery in the phone of a UAE human rights activist in 2016, Pegasus startled the cyber world with its capabilities. Developed to track down criminals and terrorists, it doesn't just tiptoe into a target smartphone, but also transforms it into a listening device. And here is why this super snooper is so lethal. We have seen that Jamal Khashoggi was killed using their NSO. Journalists have been targeted. So this company's statements at face value cannot be trusted. It may so have happened that they may have also sold this to a foreign enti uh, a private player, foreign entity, anyone, of, you know, a private surveillance company again. So it may be a private actor doing it. It collects information remotely and covertly. It can break through encryption and proprietary protocol. So apps including WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype and BlackBerry Messenger can be monitored. It can also intercept and monitor voice and voice over IP calls and can extract contacts, passwords and saved files. The spyware can also track targets with accurate positioning information using GPS and does not require the cooperation of local mobile service providers. What's more, Pegasus constantly monitors infected phones regardless of profiles or SIM cards being switched. It leaves no trace and self-destructs if there's a risk of exposure. The IT Act under Section 69 can never authorize interception through spyware. And if that happens, then clearly it's a violation of the provisions of the IT Act and also constitutes offences under the IT Act and the Indian Penal Code. Pegasus spyware is nearly impossible to detect. Your phone does not show any lags or visible signs when it has been infected by Pegasus. Many security experts and analysts have said that the only way to get completely rid of Pegasus is to discard the phone that's been affected. Once you've replaced the device, ensure that all the apps that you install are up to date and have the latest software version. Bureau Report, India Today. We'll keep tracking the story very, very closely over the days to come. We'll see what happens. Rahul Gandhi tweeting just moments before now, attacking the central government again. The central government mounting a strong counter-attack. We'll uh, look at every shade of the story. Uh, bring you all the latest for the time being, Sandeep Punitan. Uh, get your phone checked uh, and do it as quickly as you can. Uh, Swati Chaturvedi, Amit Malviya, Khanish Kaur, Shama Mohammed, and Jitin Jain for joining me on this broadcast. Thank you very much. These are serious charges and we'll track the story as it evolves in the days to come. I'm